how the delivery thing uh, going? Uh, are you getting more work? Uh, it's going okay so far. You know, so far so good. Um, I mean, I'm doing it. I guess I'm doing a bit more now, but I was doing it pretty much part time. You can make pretty decent money on that. So Uber Eats. Uh, seen a guy on YouTube uh, talking about it in New York, uh, showing his face, etc. Yeah, you could do all right. I mean, I reckon if you do it full time, and to be fair, I haven't done it full time. Um, well, not properly full time anyway. Um, I reckon if you do it full time on a regular basis, you can probably average around. But yeah, I reckon if you do it full time, you can probably average somewhere around say nine, ten pounds an hour, which um, you know, granted, it's not like major big bucks. You know, we're not talking like getting super rich. Um, but you know, it's, it's, it's decent. You know, it's decent. You could probably. I mean, I've I've heard of guys doing like some of the guys who do, who do it with the um, moped. Like uh, they tell me they could maybe do about sort of thousand pounds a week, say eight hundred to a thousand pounds a week. Um, bear in mind, of course, if you're doing a moped, you have other costs as well. So you know your fuel and your bike maintenance and all that sort of thing. You got to stick uh, pull it aside for. Um, so it probably still it probably still comes down to somewhere around you know nine ten pounds an hour. When I mean you don't get let I me mean, be clear, actually, you, you don't get paid by the hour. I should be clear on that you don't get paid by the hour. You get paid by the job. But just in terms of how much you would typically earn, um, it might average out to somewhere around nine, ten pounds an hour, give or take. So yeah, it's a, you know, it's, it's, it's a reasonable little earner. You know, it's just sucks on a on a on a manual bike. Your knees start to hurt after a while. <laughs> so hopefully, this electric bike makes that a little bit easier. Or um, actually, not let me not, let me not say easier, more efficient. That's a better word to use. Hopefully, that makes it more efficient. But what it comes down to is this: if you can do a job quicker then you could potentially do more jobs. And the less fatigue you have, the longer you can go. You know, So that's pretty much what it comes down to. It's not a guarantee that you'll get any anything, but it's just if you can do more, you could f potentially earn more. Are you guys thinking of doing uh, the uh, Uber Eats? Or actually, no, you just say that's not available in your area, actually. So yeah, no, maybe not then, maybe not. But do you guys ever think about doing anything similar to that or... um? Making a few extra quid here and there. I'd consider doing it uh, for some extra money, uh, but I deal with people too much at work. I don't think I could handle another few days with the public. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, I think I need to move to somewhere where there is actual money. Could be a good idea to actually. Yeah. Uh... I mean, I think I'm like if you if you if you're. I mean, if you're doing it full time. And I guess, and this is more based on speculation since I haven't actually done it full time. But I think if you're doing it full time, um, yeah, you could very realistically earn a decent wage out of it. Um, but other than that, yeah, I mean, if you've got a bicycle, you've got a spare few hours, you know, a week or something like that, then yeah, so definitely a good way of earning some extra cash. And one of the good things about it as well is that. I think probably the best thing about it, to be honest, is the fact that you can do it whenever you want to do it. Like it's uh, there's no sort of set uh, sh time schedule. So if you wake up whenever you wake up, you can just go out and do it. I mean, it might not necessarily be busy when you go out to do it, and that's always a thing to consider. You know, the time you're available might not be the best times to earn money. Yeah, you can pretty much go online whenever you want, it, when you whenever you're ready, and uh, yeah, whatever you can earn and whatever time you've got spare. But no, there's like, uh, I was reading about people who were, you know, complaining about that fact that, you know, they go online and there's not always going to be jobs available, you know, because it's not always going to be busy when the person's uh, ready. And by the time it is busy, they might be doing something else. And they were complaining about that. And I just feel like that's such a pointless complaint. It's like, if you're available and you're, if you're not available, then you're doing something else. Then it is what it is, you know. But I feel like the more people complain about it, the more people just going to mess up a good thing. Well, I say good thing. It's not perfect, certainly. I mean, it's... I'm not sure it's not like the greatest thing ever. Oh my god, but it's a pretty good deal, you know. It's a pretty good deal. I think the more people just complain about things that are just pointless, and then things get changed um, to try and satisfy them, it just ends up messing messing up for everybody in the end. It doesn't benefit anybody. Boot times I'd say between 4 p.m. to probably 2 a.m. Um, that's probably about right, you know. Depending on the day, of course. I mean. Like sometimes if you get like go in the morning, like I had a few mornings where a few mornings where they've been pretty good, but most of the time I go in the morning. There's not really a whole lot, but yeah, afternoons uh, like sort of lunchtime period. So around about say twelve o'clock, um, 
usually is okay. Uh, maybe from about sort of five, six p.m. onwards in the evening, so the dinner time, it's usually all right. And another thing as well, it depends on how many other people are online. So if you go to an area that's busy, but it turns out everybody else is in that same area, you might find that jobs <laughs> aren't necessarily coming through that fast because so many other people are in that same area as well. So yeah, it's not always just a case of if you try if you think of it, think of it as as you know guaranteed money. That it's not you know it's you're not guaranteed anything. It's just if there's jobs available. And yeah, usually there is, but yeah, if you go at a time, if you go to an area that's say typically busy at a certain time, but everybody else goes to the exact same area and they're trying to share the jobs out between everybody, yeah, you might find the jobs a bit uh, coming a bit thin. Whereas if you go to an area where it's maybe not so busy, but say there's less people, you might find that you get jobs fairly regular just because although it's not busy, you're maybe one of only a few people there, so you're getting everything. So um yeah it it just varies and you just see how it goes move around you know if you're not getting jobs in one area move to a different area you know see how it goes check the app the app tends to give you some good uh well see re reasonably good information about where to it where they're experiencing higher volumes and then you can kind of try those areas so um yeah it's sight it's sight. I think uh, if more people complain, uh, the better it becomes for those. The better it becomes for those who actually don't care. I, it might make uh, potential competitors are hesitant to join. Uh, like Mac heard about a little being hard to work for. Uh, now he loves it. Uh, he might not have uh, gone if he didn't check it. Out, check it for himself. Okay, I guess there's that side to it. But if people complain. At least what I'm reading anyway. Uh, people complain about things like um. Like because it's a, it's done on a self-employed basis, so there's no sort of holiday pay or you know sick pay, sick benefits, stuff like that. So people complain about that sort of thing, and they're saying they want to be classed as workers, like employed workers. Um, and there was like uh, people taking Uber to court, saying that they want to be classed as workers. And the way the cab business works, and the way this whole uh, thing is uh, uh, done, like courier work for the years. It's always been a self-employed basis. Now, I would say this. I've worked as a courier um, in the past, in the old system, and it's definitely a lot better on, on, on uh, now with the way it's being done now. Because in the old system, um, they cost you a self-employed, but you had so little control over where you worked and how many hours you worked. So really what's happening in the old system is that they gave you all the risks of being self-employed, um, with none of the benefits of being self-employed. Whereas with the new system, um, you have much more of the benefits of being self-employed in that you can work when you want, you can decide to go where you want, you can decide to just turn it off if you don't even feel like going, you know, and there's no person who decides that they don't like you that day <laughs> and, you know, doesn't want to give you any jobs while the next guy is like running up and down doing everything, making all that money and you're like, what, 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 what am I standing here for, you know? Because I logged off early the previous day, they're like, "Oh yeah," so you, you don't get none of that you no know, red tape BS. So um, yeah, the new system in my view is definitely a lot better than how it was before. Um, so yeah, people complain about that, saying, "Oh yeah, we don't get this, don't get that." The fact of the matter is that if you if you if you run any kind of business, if you have any kind of self employment you don't get holiday pay. Like if you, if you run a stall, you don't get holiday pay. So what you do is that you put money aside. You know, you understand that. You put money aside for things like, you know, sickness, holidays, whatever else you want to put money aside for and just don't spend your money all willy-nilly, you know, because I've done that. Like back in the day, I used to like get my money and be like, oh man, yeah, thousand pounds in a week, woo! And then, you know, before you realize it, it's like, oh, actually, you got to think about your taxes. You know, you got to think about your costs, your bills, and so on. Um, so yeah, it's like as long as so, but as long as you are, you know, putting stuff aside and not just spending money like a madman, then it then it works out fine. You don't have to worry about them not providing you because you can provide your own holiday pay in, in uh, doing it that way. Just put some money aside. But I think what happens a lot of times, people just spend their money. And then by the time they realize they want to take a break, they've got no money left and they have to start working extra hours to try and make up for it. And it's just like, no, just space it out, put your money aside, and it's fine. <laughs> but yeah, they're taking it to court. We'll see what the court says. I don't like the idea of it, 
you know, being classed as em employed. Because if you're classed as employed, then they decide when you work. They decide how many hours you do. They decide where you go. They decide, you know, everything. And it's just like, what's the point of this? You know, I do it for the flexibility, not to be hampered with, I could only go there and I could have to do this and I have to be available at this time. And the... Nah, man. I ain't trying to live like that. I've done that already. If that's what you want, you can... Plenty of jobs to do that. Uh, no job is easy. Uh, we have to do what we have to do to have to do. Uh, it can suck, but you have to, uh, to get your shit together sometimes. Indeed, absolutely, hundred percent, hundred percent. No matter what you do, whether you're employed or self-employed, there's no such thing as an easy ride. There's no such thing as an easy ride. You know, it's it's just understanding that how things work and how you use it to benefit yourself in the best possible way, and. In all honesty, with stuff it like, say, Uber or Deliveroo or, you know, anything like on along those lines, if you're doing it and it turns out that the times that you're available are the times when there's no money to be made, then it's just like, you know what, you can get a part-time job. You know what I mean? You can get a part-time job for the mornings and just do that instead. But yeah, if, it, if it's not working out for you, there's other options. If it is, then cool. Me and Matt worked many years for no pay. Uh, we got a place to stay, but no wage. So no money is a benefit to us. So any money, sorry, I read it wrong. So any money is a benefit to us. Mm, you know, I, I, get my, I can't prove this, but I do get a feeling that there's a lot of people. I'm not even just young people, by the way. I think there's some older people out there as well like this, that they just don't understand work. That they don't understand work. That they're looking for things to be easy. They're looking for things... They're looking to they're looking to do the least amount possible. You know, without realizing that anytime you look for easy, all you're really doing is making things unnecessarily more difficult for yourself. And every time I got a holiday, I, it still amazes me. I get paid for it, it shocks me. <laughs> uh, I hear that man. Hundred percent it's because uh they tend to see the end product first, like the house and the cars. Mmm. Now, more often than not, I'd say the best way to deal with any kind of job, for the most part, of course, and not this is not going to be every single situation, but I think the best way to deal with any type of job, any type of work, is to just get on with it. You know, just to get on with it. Do what you're supposed to be doing and get on with it. You know, the more you, like, try to, you know, take shortcuts or all that kind of stuff, it's just, it's just not going to work out. You know, I'm, I'm not going wrong. I said there are times where you do need to look at things and actually there is a better way of doing this, or actually, you know, you know, this isn't really good, or da da da. And there are going to be times like that, but for the most part, let's get on, with it. <laughs> just get on with it. Ninety percent of the time, you know, it, it's just just best to just get on with it. And if and if for any reason you feel like it's not not to your benefit, like if the job doesn't work, go to your benefit, or the work type of work doesn't benefit you in any way. And yeah, look for something else, you know. 100%. Mm. There's some people who uh, work with that no matter what uh, will not stay. Will not stay even five. Will not stay even five minutes late uh, just because they can. Just be, as soon as the time's gone, I'm done. <laughs> you know, I get that. I get that. I mean, I think nobody, of course, nobody wants to, to stay behind a second later than you have to. But I think true for the matter is that sometimes it's inevitability with jobs that there are going to be times where you finish later than you would like to it sucks especially if you're finishing like you know 20 minutes later than you're supposed to and i used to work in call centers and um that'd, that'd be a very common occur occurrence where it's like you're supposed to finish at i don't know eight o'clock whatever and it gets to that point where that's about five to eight and you think to yourself, I just don't want another call. It's about a period of time where you don't want another call because you know any call you get within that five minutes uh, period, you're you're almost certainly going to be uh, uh, going over time. And um and, and it would happen like you get a call, and most of the calls would be maybe a couple of minutes. It's not so bad, but every now and then you get that one customer who just needs to talk about everything, and you just say like, oh, I was supposed to go home an hour ago. <laughs> But it's just it's just life, you know. It's just it's just part of working life. Sometimes you finish later than than you're supposed to. It sucks, but hey, what can you do? What can you do? Uh, if I finish five minutes late, uh, that's early for me. <laughs> well, there you go. I mean, that's it, isn't it? Five minutes isn't so bad. 
I remember one time, like I uh, this, uh, got on the phone and uh, I was talking to this customer. And yeah, I can't remember what it was. I think it was something like 30, 40 minutes I've ended up finishing after my time. I was like, oh, bloody hell, man, really? I'm still here. I'm st still talking to this customer. I'm like, oh, I want to, I mean, I could, uh, but yeah. A few minutes, five minutes ain't so bad, but it could be worse. It's been a little bit mixed uh, over the last uh, few sort of weeks or so, a few weeks and months. I haven't, like I said, I haven't really been doing it too consistently. Um, I would say lately, though, been trying to do uh, Thursdays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Uh, however, I do want to try the Friday. That's why, um, actually, you might not know this yet, but um, yeah, uh, Friday stream, uh, I, I want to do a bit earlier. Um, so I can try out the Friday evening so I can make a little bit of extra cash there. Um, so yeah, Friday stream, I want to start around about 2 o'clock or so. And then maybe end at about uh, 5.30, 6 o'clock. Actually, not 2 o'clock, so about 3 o'clock. Maybe about 2 between about 2.30 and 3 o'clock I want to start. Um, and then maybe end about 5.36. Um, and then yeah, see about the Friday evenings on the... Uh, delivery uh, things I keep hearing Fridays are supposed to be a pretty good day for deliveries so uh, I thought you know what I need to try and make as much money as I can while I'm while I'm uh, here to make my finances look better <laughs> apparently that's gonna come into handy when it comes to doing other things making your finances look good so I was like alright cool let me try this out what's your worst experience so far doing a job worst experience um hmm Let's see, uh, I guess it was the one time that I had to cancel an order because they're just taking too long, which doesn't sound particularly terrible when you, when you think about it. Oh, it takes long to cancel the order. But I went to a, one restaurant. In fact, I'll say it was a, it was a McDonald's. I'll say it, whatever. And um, what they ask uh, is that when you get to a restaurant, like most of the time you get to a restaurant, they have the food either ready for you or maybe you only wait a few minutes and they'll, they'll have it for you then. Every now and then you wait a little bit longer, but that's usually the case. Um, but what they ask is that you wait at least 15 minutes before you cancel the order. Anyway, so I go to, go to McDonald's and um, I uh, I go to the guy and show him that I'm here to pick up an order, show him the order number and so on. He's like, oh yeah, it'd be, uh, it'd be ready soon. Cool. Um, so I'm waiting and 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 it gets to a point where I think it was about sort of a 10 minutes I was waiting for at this point and I was saying to the guy um, you know is this ready you've been waiting for a while now and they're like oh yeah um, yeah we're still we're still was working on that so it's right and then it got to a point I think in the end I waited something like 20 maybe 25 minutes and I said and it still wasn't ready and I thought you know what this, this is this is taking way too long so I said to him I'm gonna to have to cancel this because it's taking too long apparently there was like a guy there or one of the other delivery guys there was saying telling me that he's been waiting over an hour so I was like you know what this is I'm not gonna wait any longer but cancel the order and uh yeah just go home I'm not I'm gonna stay online but the thing is what I've um I just hasn't happened to me but one somebody was telling me this where he said that he was waiting too long so he canceled the order um, and then when he got outside, he got another order coming through, and it was the exact same order that he cancelled. Because <laughs> I guess they had to rebook it, and it just went back to it just went back to the same person. Because I guess at that point he's probably the closest one to the restaurant, right? So um, it went back to the same person. I was like, really? I was like, is, is it at least ready yet, though? I was like, <laughs> it's a piss take. Um, yeah, I mean it is what it is. I think, especially someone where I think for the most part. As much as I don't like McDonald's food, you know, I, I, I don't, really don't. <laughs> but I think for the most part, McDonald's are usually pretty good when it comes to handling deliveries. Usually. Um, I would say that I feel like some of their staff might need some training. <laughs> and maybe that's just because I'm kind of old school with certain things. I don't know, maybe. But I feel like you go in there sometimes and... Um, like the one that's not, there's one that's not too far from me where I've been to and where the staff, they've been like, really, really they, they say hello, they're friendly. And it's like, cool, you can have a little chat, cool, awesome. And I'm not saying, look, you don't have to be best friends with everybody, of course, but you see those, like, okay, cool, these like kind of, they're friendly people, you know, you know jovial, uh, you know, good to talk to, that sort of thing. Awesome, not a problem. I like that. Um, but then, yeah, there's some places where you go, some of the McDonald's I've been to where 
you go in there and it seems to me that each uh, McDonald's has a different way of handling delivery. So some like you to go to a certain spot, let them know that you're picking up and then they'll bring it to you on another spot. Oh, wait, whatever. Some you just go to a, a this bit and then they bring it to you there. Whatever. But each place handles it a bit differently, it seems. Um, so I'll go into this one place for the, um, and there's this lady behind the counter. And, you know, I've got my backpack on. So I think it's probably somewhat obvious that I, I'm here to pick up an order because you kind of that same thing where you've got a backpack on um, and you put your phone in your hand which is pretty much how every every guy walks into a restaurant you've got a phone in your hand a big backpack on um, so it's, I thought it was pretty obvious but whatever you know you don't want to make too many assumptions I'm sure um, but there's, there's, one, there's one behind the counter she's kind of like blank staring at me like, like she, she could see me I could see her um, and well she's not really saying anything so eventually I'm like you know uh, hello I'm here to pick up a delivery you know and she's like hmm you know, somebody else deals with that. I was like, okay. Can you let them know that I'm here? <laughs> you know, like, just, just, you know what I mean? It's like, I, it's like, look, I get that maybe it's not, that's, this is not your job, but, you know, empirically, you don't seem to be doing anything. So can you let the person who's supposed to be dealing with this know that I'm here so I could collect the order? And, you know, it's just, just, and yeah, it happens quite a few times. They're pretty just blank stare you. And it seems to happen in McDonald's a lot. Um, not only McDonald's, to be fair. Not only. I won't single them out. It has happened in a few other restaurants. But um, it seems to happen. I guess McDonald's is quite a big chain. Maybe that's why. Maybe maybe that's why, because it's a big chain. It's more often, it seems like it's more common there. But now you walk in there sometimes and people just blank stare you. Like, like you can see me. Um, hello. But yeah. But other, t other than that, like, you, a lot of times you go there and it's just like, yay, hi, how you doing? And, cool. Have you invested in a bum bag? Or do you risk uh, having things proposed? No, I have a uh, bum bag. But I didn't get this because of Uber. I had this from a time ago. I'm I'm a, a bum bag aficionado, quite frankly. Well, maybe, maybe aficionado is not quite the right word to use. But I do I do like a good fanny pack. <laughs> I do like fanny packs. So I'm, I'm a a fan of fanny packs so i've had this for a while and this is an east pack one so it's a good brand um the one i had before this didn't last very long i bought it for something like five pounds or six pounds or something like that it, it did not last long at all this was uh i think 20 pounds so it's a bit more expensive but definitely worth it it's a lot stronger it's sturdy it's got a lot of uh, compartments um i would say the one criticism i have with this that it's not as big as i'd like it to be i'd like it to be a little bit bigger but aside from that, this is just a really good bum bag. So um, I, I'm quite happy with this. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I was rocking bum bags before The Rock made them popular. Yeah, I know that look. Uh, the bag. Yes, that's one. Uh, I've had that look many times. <laughs> yeah, I'm here to pick this up. But then again, having said that about the blank stairs, I guess to be fair, I've seen some delivery drivers you know, not be very courteous as well. So um, I guess it kind of goes both ways. I've seen some delivery drivers, you know, just kind of walk into places, you know, don't really introduce themselves or, or well, I guess you don't have to introduce yourself. But don't, they, they, they don't, because I, I would typically say, hi, I'm here to, you know, pick an order. That's how I, I typically say stuff like that. But yeah, I've seen some people go into places and just like have their phone out and be like, you're not going to talk, <laughs> you know? You get some people walking stress ones, they don't take their helmet, like the motorcycle guys that don't take their helmets off, which, to be fair, isn't the biggest of deals, but I, I don't know, maybe, it's, again, maybe I'm just old school. I personally feel like you should take your helmet off. It's just nice, but whatever. Maybe that's just me. I don't say anything to them because this is not my place to. I'm not going to be like, you should be doing it this way. I don't say that because it's not my place to, but yeah, I've noticed a few things. There was this one driver who, um, I was there in a restaurant and they had actually had my order ready. And I could see they had my order ready because it has the tag on it with the order number. But I didn't take it yet because I wasn't, a, I hadn't spoken to a, uh, uh, a, one of the staff members yet to say that I'm here for this order. Um, but one of the delivery guys was there. was like, oh, just take it, just take it, just take it. And I was thinking like, I, 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 no. <laughs> I, no, no. You know, you need to let somebody know that I'm actually, because... Oh, you know, I just thought of actually another worst ex. Well, I'll come to it in a moment. Now, now we're now that memories are coming back. Now memories are coming back. But anyway, but I was like, no, that's that's a terrible idea. I'm just gonna reach over the counter, and and take something without the person, without the people who put it there knowing that I'm taking it. That that's a terrible idea, you know. Because first of all, like, 
you could be anybody, right? You know, they don't, if I haven't spoken to anybody yet, they don't really know who I am. I mean, any cyclist has a, pretty much every cyclist has a backpack on them. So it's like, you could be anybody. And I was reaching over the counter to take something. Like, no, it was, I, no, I, I'll wait till somebody comes. I'll let them know that I'm here for this. And then show them my order number so they know it's definitely for me. And then I can take it, you know. I'm not going to just reach behind it. But anyway. But yeah, it's other time. Now, that I'm, now, it's, now it's in my mind now. It's in my mind now. <laughs> it's other time I go to this uh, restaurant. And I guess to be fair, like, the restaurant gets, like, uh... Uh, the they get like your, you know your name that you're coming to pick it up on the on the machine and it has a picture of you as well so they know what you look like as well so I guess it, it, to be fair if they see me come in you 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 might know it's me right but the thing is is that I get to this restaurant and I put I put I just put my bike up outside I'm literally just get to the door and the woman uh, is running is coming up to me right just shoving this uh, uh package the food package in my face like yeah yeah it's, this is it. No, no, hello, not hi, are you, you know, to confirm. Nothing like that. No greeting, just like, hey. But raw. <laughs> and I'm thinking, okay, first of all, okay, look, I get it. You know, you have certain things to let you know that I'm coming. But still, there's certain etiquette we should still follow, right? Like, good morning, first of all, you know. Um, can I, should I show you my order number so we can confirm that it's, you know, that's all, all, all legit. You know what I mean? All that, all that sort of stuff. You know, plus it turns out I was actually I was actually there to pick up two orders. I she only had one of them ready, so yeah, I had to I had to wait for a second one anyway. So I was like, "Come on, man! It, it doesn't it doesn't hurt to say hello." But I will say this though: that, um, there was another lady there that was working at a restaurant. She was so much nicer. Um, <laughs> it's just so much nicer. I was just like, you know, she was like, "Oh yeah, let's just be it. I'll be second. I'll be ready. Uh, shortly, just uh, wait a little bit." It's like cool, and you know, thank you, bye. You know, she was she was that, that's just. Basic politeness, you know what I mean? Just basic politeness. It's not. It's not much. It's not much to do. It's not that much. <laughs> That'd be awkward. Uh, best to make sure they know for real, man. Indeed. Because what I was thinking when that happened. Well, here's what I was thinking when it happened is that because a lot of cyclists um, in London have you know similar sort of back. Not not exactly the same backpacks. Of course, not exactly the same backpacks, but a similar sort of look to. You know, that sort of delivery driver type uh, uh, look, right? A lot of cyclists tend to have that just anyway. Imagine, like, you know, somebody, somebody else has walked up to that restaurant and it just happened to be a person who, say, has a similar look to me, shall we say? Shall we just leave it as that. A person with a similar look to me. <laughs> and this woman wasn't checking for reference uh, order numbers or anything like that. She's just handing over the food. And some guy just, like, just was there. Just, he, he probably be like, hey free food <laughs> you know what I mean and then by the time I turn up to pick up the order it's like oh yeah we gave it to somebody uh. yeah always check man always check I will say this though um in in all fairness compared to when I was doing the courier deliveries um I would say that for the most part people tend to be a lot nicer on the food deliveries than on the sort of parcel deliveries. That said, I would rather deliver parcels just because they're less messy. <laughs> you're less likely to deal with spillages when you're delivering parcels. Um, but yeah, people tend to, at least in my experience, I don't know if this is for everybody, but in my experience, I come across a lot more friendlier people doing the food deliveries than I did when I was doing the motorcycle deliveries. Because when I was doing motorcycle deliveries, the courier deliveries there, the amount of times you walk to places, people don't look you in the eye, you know, they, nothing. It's, and it's so common. It's like even like the place like where you get the uh, the dispatch office, even those guys weren't weren't polite, you know. They'll talk to you like like you're nothing. So um, it was a disrespect all around. I was like, dude, don't, don't, don't. Mm -mm. <laughs> so yeah, definitely has that going for it. 